Hello everyone and welcome to another video by me, Ryan the Dalt Man, as always, and today we are covering what is on the screen, Adventures in Middle Earth, Wilder Adventures. So this is a adventure book for the Wilderlands in the Middle Earth uh, campaign setting. So this obviously uses 5e rule set and all that sort of lovely stuff. So if you buy it from the main website, um, you'll get a PDF through Drive-Thru RPG. You get it by email within a couple of days of purchase um, because it's not out at the time of recording. And this is um, mid-late June at this point. So uh, you'll get it by email. You get a couple of PDFs. One will be the main book, which you can see on screen. You'll also get the maps for the adventures as well you could obviously create your own but these come in the book and um, there also is the the dm version so there's a map of the wilderlands um you get the dm version and you also get a printable player version to put in the table if you're playing at a table as opposed to playing a roll 20 or fantasy grounds i'm not sure if this is on either but Nothing stops you putting these, you know, in and then playing it as is. So yeah. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of the book. So in Wilderland, uh, Wilderland Adventures, you get five, one, two, three, four, five, six. You get six stories. Um, the appendix at the end is essentially the uh, journey uh, events tables. Um, there's no chunk of monsters at the end. The monsters are spaced out throughout the adventure. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but however, the way that this um, this way that this campaign is set out, and as well as how you would run Middle Earth anyway, the, you would do a lot more prep than what you would do with normal 5e stories if you were in say like storm king's thunder or stuff like that you you can genuinely do less prep and still run it you know um and that kind of stuff so each one is basically a chapter so we'll just flick through the first one so it gives you an introduction and um, what sort of levels the adventures uh the the adventures are um kind of set out for so you will start at level one which is Good and bad, depends on what you like, but it is a new setting, so there's not there's not a lot of magic, um, because it is Middle Earth. So you get a little horn outside. Uh, it gives you a little introduction on how to use the guide. There are sections in there where you'll see these symbols, um, and it'll tell you the challenge rating, and then you just refer to them refer to this index of um, how much XP you give out and it tells you if it is individual or whether group because you'll have the different color coded which is good um, if you're giving out experience for doing certain things obviously you give experience out for monsters and fighting and stuff but this also gives out you know whether you destroy a barricade or something I don't know that was a really crummy example so first adventure so don't leave the path Adventure 1 and two, levels 1 and 2. So it gives you who, what, where, when and why. Um, this adventure is taking place. Uh, it gives you a brief rundown of the six parts. Um, and they have their own individual names. Just like um, maybe an episode in a, a TV series. This... this um, these series of books from Cubicle 7 do a very good job allowing you to section out adventures or modules to give them um, a movie or TV show kind of feel to them, um, which is great. It's something different and it doesn't try and compete with the endless going of... Um, regular D, D sessions you know it's just not one oh you're a level one and just milling around in life and then this big adventure happens and you go from level one to whatever level within the space of a couple of days or a month you know this one spaces out quite regularly it's, it gives you an indication that certain adventures can be taken in the same year 
others have to be taken the next year after the um the fellowship phase uh, um if you follow the the other video that i did um to do with the player's guide it should cover that as well as the law master's guide which i'm going to do after this um so they're taken every year so they're spaced out so you go home you have rest you live a life and then maybe you're called together to do something else depending on what the story is so the first adventure basically sets around a merchant uh, who has hired three guards to basically aid him in taking his his wares to Mirkwood from I can't remember uh, I think it is Lake Town um, he's, ta yeah, he's taking his, his goods to let's just go for the sake of argument that he, he takes his stuff from Lake Town to Mirkwood uh, he hires three guards to help him in such things and lo and behold because Smaug is dead and everybody there is a power vacuum there um, there's a lot more possibilities for people to um, basically do nefarious things so as he's traveling essentially he they rob him um, because he's n not that good you know even though he's got a kid a little boy that he's trying to take care of because he, you know, his wife died um, he's not a very good judge of character so he takes these um, these uh, mercenaries slash thugs to help him transport his wares and psh, yeah it doesn't work out so this the first section is just introduction so you know you're called to lake town for whatever reason um and you know you are asked to go and find this individual because he hasn't turned up etc let's just go with that and uh you find him along uh you 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 find him and you help him however you help him decides on what happens later in the adventure so there is a um, nice artwork so you can depending on how you resolve the conflict so you could just straight up hit him until the dead and that puts an end to that um tether that story story thread or you could try and intimidate them um, depending on what level of intimidation that you get so if you barely succeed yeah you scare them off but they might come back um, there is a, another section in one of the other parts where they do come back and affect certain things that happen um, or you could intimidate them so well that yeah they even when they see you later on they, they just shit themselves and run away um, this uh see where we go so as we go down look you can see in the second part when you go to the when you're guests of the elves um you get a party bump of xp um equal to half a um level so i think that's like 50 xp uh, or 100 xp something like that um it does give you an indication that when you're when the, the lawmaster is playing a NPC of a certain standard um, that may be asked of certain things that you know expectations change the DC depending on um, depending on what um, what you do. So so yeah, so that can be. You know, good and bad depending on whoever's in the party but you know there is a whole um hierarchy hierarchy there is a whole there is a spreadsheet kind of thing or table that says in the uh one of the books i can't remember exactly which one that says like elves this is what they think of the other races and da -da 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 -da. it is like this big chart that you can look at um you know which is good when you when you DM, so you don't have to think. Well, oh, does like these type of humans think about these type of humans? It does actually tell you that. So you got some nice artwork of um, Baldor and Belgo, who are the, the the merchant and his son from the first section. Because this actually is the second part to that. Um, it is quite long. Um, so yeah, so we get past there. The thing that's in the well. 
ba, 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 ba. and then it gives you a section on the fellowship phase of what really should happen um, from a traditional sort of sense depending on what happens in the adventures and things might change you know if you're a wood elf then maybe you don't go back to Mirkwood for whatever reason maybe you need to go to Riverdale for whatever you know trying to think of something on the spot and I can't think of it uh, and then it jumps into uh, of leaves and stewed hobbit which is the next section and then it just follows the same sort of process so it gives you uh, who what where when and why and then it gives you a quick breakdown of um, the adventuring phase uh, the sections that you will go through what happens in the epilogue and then it jumps straight into the adventure so as you go along you'll see that um, you get really nice artwork oh, that's pretty sweet some more hobbits and you get some stat blocks as well as you'll go along so night right uh night right is not um in the dungeon master that the monster manual so they do a very uh, cubicle 7 do a, a good job of making their own lord of the rings-esque um monster stat blocks i've looked over a couple they are pretty good and i will probably use some of these in my normal DD sessions um because they are different to what you'll find in the monster manual they're not so heavily steeped in magic they are toned down um so i think there is a space for there in like the like your normal D, &D sessions um yeah, I mean the artwork is very consistent and the maps are really nice as well and they're all hexes um, I generally deal in squares hexes just adds more sides you know it's not that much of a problem um, I'm sure somebody at some point will do a squared version because you know there are OCD people like that uh, name character and um, some other minions and stuff. I'm just going to skip to the bottom. I'm not going to flick through the whole thing. Uh, the end one, as you could probably imagine, because it is D&D, &D, uh, does end with a encounter with Raynar, the huge dragon. You end up f uh, either fighting or aiding a drake. So Smaug was killed in The Hobbit. Um, so there are lesser drakes around as you notice this one doesn't fly so it is like a really large kimono dragon to be fair uh, but he is a dragon nonetheless and he is a challenge rating of 14 so at this point your characters will probably be level 4 or 5 so taking on a dragon that's level 14 challenge rating 14 not good um, you do not want to take this guy on for a number of reasons um, yeah not good he has a he has like he has a resistance to what was it was this? oh yeah uh, so he has a, an ability to just save a saving throw um, and it's rechargeable as well. It's not like le normal legendary resistance where it's a one or two or three uses per day. Uh, or to three uses per day. This one is rechargeable. So it's a bit hit and miss. If he rolls a six on a d6 at the end of his turn, he gets the <laughs> draconic resistance back, which is pretty good. It adds a little bit of variety to the game. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. The rest of the book after then is made up of the journey tables so as you disembark you'll do all your modifiers you'll roll then the dm will roll a d12 and consult the journey table all the journeys are set off into the individual uh adventures yeah store in there uh, self in the individual adventures and it tells you the section it tells you basically what happens um a lot of them refer to this with some minor changes or something unique so as you can see that one's different to the rest the other ones tend to just do with the adventure above but with this alteration that's that that's the kind of thing that it'll do which is pretty good 
it adds a variety and plus also like it might give you inspiration to do a couple of these for your own adventures especially when you do like long long journeys between cities that last for like a 10 day or two 10 days or a month um, this adds um, especially if you want to skip past it for whatever reason or whatever you, you, you can use that it just takes very little adaptation to get to it and a lot of it isn't steeped in a middle earth sort of lore so you could easily just change the titles and you'll be away to go so yeah so that was adventures in middle earth um very good book uh can't wait to get my hands on the hardback cover which should be out in a couple of months, I think. I think they said that it was Oct September, October, that it was due out. Um, so yeah, so I can't wait to get my hands on it. I can't wait to even just DM this because this is this is a really nice, um, well, I think a really nice setting. Um, I mean, who doesn't like Lord of the Rings? Just dead people that are dead inside. That's who don't like Lord of the Rings. Um, it's a really nice setting. Something different from usual. Um, loads of magic, loads of magical creatures, etc. It just adds a load, its own little niche in that type of adventure. And if you, if your party wants to, you know, run uh, a Middle Earth setting that's more grounded, uh, but they can alter certain smaller um, adventures and stories because this is obviously it's going to start off as canon. But depending on, you know, if you try and kill Elrond, Elrond and you kill him, obviously it's not canon anymore. So, there is an element to that. So, if you guys want to have, run an adventure and pretend that you're a canon within Tolkien's universe, go for it. It's a gr good adventure from what I've read through on this. Um, and I will definitely be pushing this for the stream at some point. Or maybe a one-off, or I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, so I've dribbled on long enough and I'm going to leave it there. So my name is Ryan, as always, because you know, you're watching this. So you would obviously know who I am just because you're watching this. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, look after each other, play more games and do all that lovely stuff. Peace.